Hokshi. Recorded live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to University of Acadia Talk to you, uh, show tonight with Franco Collins from Australia. He has some great new information to share with us tonight. And uh, we like, would like to welcome everyone. And just as a reminder, um, no information given is for legal advice and uh, please for educational purposes only. And also, for those of you on the phone line, when we get to the question and answer session, if you'll press star eight, it will put you in the question and answer queue. We'll get you in the order that you're in there. And those of you on the chat, if you'll type in question in all uppercase, that way it flags me and Frank, uh, myself and Frank, for a question for Frank when we get to those uh, areas in the, and, and the question and answer session. And uh, type in your question in proper case, upper and lower case, uh, after you type in question in all upper case. And with that, Frank, uh, uh, we have Frank here, and we'll turn it over to you, Frank. Thanks, Terry. Well, welcome, everyone, tonight. There's a lot to cover tonight, and I look, look forward to getting through this tonight. Uh, I'm still getting a bit of an echo. So, so I'm just going to change my audio settings here. Hopefully this will work a bit better. The key things tonight, I'm just still getting an echo which is making it difficult to speak. And I'm, because I'm still getting this echo, it's making it impossible to speak. I'm just going to change my audio setting. One second. I'm sorry, everyone. Be one moment. Okay, fingers crossed, and please let me know, people, if you can hear me better on this audio now. Uh, I was finding it very difficult, unfortunately, to speak then. I'm sorry, I was getting a, a loop. Um, can people please let me know on the on the live recording if you can hear me properly? And if you can hear me properly, please let me know that you're not getting an echo. And then I'll start. Very good. Okay. First off, a week is a long time with the amount of information that's coming. And a number of you may have seen the latest audio. Uh, that came, uh, this video that in fact came from a group called freemanitoba.com, Freeman Manitoba. If you haven't had a chance to see it, I would suggest you go and have a look at universityofucadia.info and have a look at the audios, the videos I should say, from a fellow by the name of Dean Clifford. They are really excellent, absolutely excellent. I had the chance to get a number of emails from the group Freeman. Manitoba last year when we first started to post our material and research on trusts. And what excites me when I see the material that's come back from uh, Dean Clifford is that it shows if we approach this information and we approach our research in the manner of open, transparent, as, as far as we can without ego, then together we will find that we can uncover this occult, this secret knowledge, this trickery that they've been using against us for so, so long. So when I saw that information and I went back to the work that we've been doing on trusts, not only did it excite me, but it, it caused me to reflect on how important it is to be able to express to people as clearly as possible the key elements relating to trusts, position, presumption. Now, one of the key objectives, one of the key responsibilities that is coming through with the canons is to provide a foundation that restores the law and clears up the law so that we can clearly comprehend and, and, and acknowledge the elements that go together in the foundation of divine law, natural law, positive law, cognitive law, and so on. 
And in that process, that we can drain the swamp. We can see the rocks, we can see the alligators. Now, one of the, the, the downsides of doing this is that over time, as you're going through, it's not as if we're going to blacks, we're going to jurisprudence, we're going to these various old legal texts and finding that they're speaking plainly and clearly. As I mentioned, everything in the private bar guild is occult. Layer upon layer, ritual upon ritual. And what it means is not every time will we get the full picture clear. Now, the material that came to realize the importance of the role of the executor, I've paid homage and, and I'll pay homage again, came from the persistence and the insistence of David Clarence as a researcher, a man that at the time uh, found great offense with a number of things with Yakaya. So on one hand, he was a expressor of important information. At the same time, he didn't like the idea of, of preparing a, a canon of law, something that people could go to, that they didn't have to go to a guru to see. They didn't have to go to some course to see. They didn't have to pay money that they could actually come to a source and find the answers. But he was a key, key source in understanding that. Now, after preparing the material on trusts and that material going out, over 1.1 million unique visitors have visited the Eucadian sites, the collective Eucadian sites, the over 60 sites, over 10 million page impressions. Now, after a, a year or six months, others have gone away, taken that knowledge and finally come back and said, look, let's make it much simpler. So this, to me, if you wanted to know a sign of hope, it is being open, approaching this as an open source model, is, is showing that others are coming, others are using and together, we are seeing more clearly than ever before. Now, with that, I'm going to go tonight with some key information and updates that I believe are absolutely fundamental for us to get our head around when we are talking about law, the position, and presumptions. So whilst we still have the outstanding material that needs to go to the Bank for International Settlement, and the turning on of the money system. I believe in honour of the latest information and in honour of the reflections and the improvements of the positive law that tonight we're going to spend some more time looking at some of the new, new information in the positive law canons. And in, and in particular, we're going to have a look at the key presumptions of the Roman courts, the presumptions behind summons, the presumptions behind trusts, so that in our minds, as the information provided to us uh, as feedback this week, we are as clear as we can possibly be in knowing exactly what is going on and how we may disarm those presumptions and those falsities that we are encountering when we are forced to go to court. So to do this, I'm going to go through some of the canons that are located on one-heaven.org. And I ask you, please, to go and have a look at one-heaven.org and please go to the canons of positive law. Now, when you get to the home page, and as you're going to the canons of positive law, I would like to make mention that in the spirit of simplifying and clarity, that over the coming weeks, the remedy material that you currently see on the front page of One Heaven is being reviewed with an aim to make it simpler and clearer for the purpose of being more effective. I respect that many people who came to UK for the first time came because they have a pressing issue and are looking for something that can be shown to be clear and to work. So in that vein, the material that is currently on the home page under ecclesiastical deed poll, under how to save your home and under how to succeed a court will be subject to review and it will be placed in coming weeks onto some of the other Ukrainian sites, specifically the court sites, 
we have a number of websites that relate to the courts, the courts of the various UK societies. And the reason that material will be migrating to that place is that the purpose of One Heaven, when we talk about these canons, is to talk about the rest restoration of the law. And when we speak about uh, remedy, really what we're talking about is a package of things, a package of activities that we need to consider in terms of asserting our rights in rebutting their presumptions and that is more appropriate at the court sites. So I just want to let you know that, that that process is going on. So if you are looking at the material at the moment and you do see things currently there that are different or not as accurate as some of the things we're discussing tonight, I just ask for your indulgence, please, in recognising that that process of update will take a number of weeks and it will, needs to be done separate to myself. With that in mind, let's now jump into the positive law and let's have a look at some key, key insights right off the bat that I believe are relevant to anybody that is going to a Roman court. Well, if we're going to talk about Roman court, let's go to an article that specifically deals with Roman court. And I'm referring to Article 299 under Forums of Law, Article 299. Let's go straight into presumptions. When you get to Article 299 on presumptions, I'm going to read some of the key uh, insights of this and you'll see the importance and relevance of what this information hopefully means when we deal with the Roman private bar guild. So I'm logging in there myself right now. Okay. So the first canon is canon 3224. What is a Roman court? A Roman court is a forum for the exclusive private business of a law, a law bar guild sanctioned by the Roman cult, also known as the Vatican, in which members of the guild presume certain roles on behalf of the government in order to make profit for the guild and its members through direct asset seizure and the commercialization of various securities, bonds, and bailments. Canon 3225. The meaning and source of the word court in respect of Roman court is derived from the Latin word courtio, meaning securities, bond, and bailment, as the primary commercial business of ancient Roman cult sanctioned law guilds since the 13th century. Now let me stop there because this is important. There is a mountain of misinformation, and I don't even want to begin to go through that mountain of mis misinformation when we talk about the origins of law, the origins of the bar, the origin of the courts. First off is the word court does not come from cohort. It does not come from a place. It comes from a specific word from a specific time, meaning courtio, meaning literally the commercialization of securities from law. Courtio is the origin of the word. Furthermore, the Roman cult that took power in the 11th century only to lose it and return again under a better model in the late 12th and early 13th century, created the concept of the guilds in the 13th century. And from the 13th century, in places such as England, we have seen the full commercialization of the courts by a private bar guild. The courts have never been public in England or any of its colonies since the 13th century. Canon 3226. Prior to the creation of the bar associations of the 19th century, the private bar guilds were known as guilds as well as livery companies or livery companies and often by the name as judges and notaries since the 13th century, coinciding, incidentally, with the invention of indulgences of the Roman cult. Now let's get closer to these presumptions. Canon 3227. 